What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we had a discussion about this a long time ago. Not a long time ago. I think right after the announcement of Superman Legacy was made by James Gunn, when he made his announcement on, on Twitter. I said to you, Brian, possibility that he may direct Superman, and, and you stated you don't think so. <laughs> Man, I'm tired of being right. I think I convinced you of the, the possibility yes. of him <laughs> directing. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> this dude wrote it. He'd been writing it. He was approached before he was announced co-CEO. He was approached w way before about writing Superman. He was given Suicide Squad, but he was on deck to write Superman. He was, he'd been writing it. There was no way I felt it would have been hard for him to give up that seat for something that was, I feel like he feels that this is an important character and it needs to be done correctly in a certain way. And that's the, that's the, Brian, that's the, 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 the wording that he's using to describe the importance of this movie and this character. He's saying a lot of right things. The inspirations where he's pulling from are very, Brian, gives me some excitement, Brian. What are your concerns of him being the guy to direct Superman Legacy? So Tom King, uh, one of the writers, and obviously well-known comic book writer, wrote Superman Up in the Sky. He kind of dropped the knowledge in an interview almost in passing where he because he said James Gunn is is the director like he said it not like he could be he said it he is and we know that Peter Saffron said publicly he was trying to convince James Gunn to do it you you got me to come around the idea that in the end he wasn't going to let it go and it doesn't yeah. look like he will so look I mean the the, po the positive is obvious like he said it's like he's he's putting his money where his mouth is he's putting his name on the line for this entire DCU and he's taking the flagship project and he's saying we're gonna live or die basically on on me which I respect I respect his willingness to do that look my concern my concerns are simple and twofold number one is his responsibilities lie well beyond just the success of Superman Legacy and I I view Superman Legacy as an all-consuming project and so i do have questions with the ability to shepherd all these different strands of the dcu and introduce new characters and set up the stories and the arcs the way they want for this 10-year plan can he continue to do that efficiently and effectively if he has to shoot and edit this critical tenfold picture at the same time. That's my number one concern. My number two concern is really just, I I just want to see James Gunn flex his range here. I'm just, I'm just concerned that some of his staples that work well in both Suicide Squad and Guardians don't feel to me like the DNA of a great Superman story. Now he is saying the right things. He seems to be finding the right inspirations. Can he translate that visually into a Superman story that makes us believe again that a man can fly. Can he do that? Visually, I think we don't, I, I'm not too concerned with visual, Brian. It's the dialogue and the mm -hmm. actions that Superman does in this film that will, that is will, that is what will convince me or show me what he was thinking about, uh, about how Superman should be portrayed. And that's what I'm mostly excited about, Brian, is what he said and where he's getting his inspiration. That's why I, I kind of felt that he wasn't going to let this go, that he was the one that, gonna, that was going to take over. Now, obviously, he has a bigger role than just being a director for Superman. He has a universe to oversee. Um, it's going to be very interesting, Brian. I... <laughs> The bottom line, I think he's taking the approach, Brian, of if Superman doesn't work, none of this works. And he's right about that. That's that that's the approach. And I think 
And like you said, he's right. And, and I think I am just waiting to see Superman. Everybody's waiting to see what this Superman legacy will be because that will be the beginning of his chapter. And if it fails, Brian, then nothing else matters. But I also think, too, this is a situation where so much of this will ride on his direction and his craft because we know that he's casting a younger Superman. By definition, that actor is not going to be Robert Downey Jr. in 2007. It's not going to be someone who's a fully formed performer. It's going to be someone in their 20s who has a lot of potential, but who needs the part and the direction to make us believe he is both Clark Kent and Superman. None of us, you know, none, like we, none of us ever had questions about how Henry Cavill carried the physicality of Superman. Yeah. That was never in doubt. We never got to see his, ma his maximum chops as it, when it came to Clark. That was a directorial and a storytelling decision. James Gunn cannot make that mistake, but the casting is now on him. He's going to choose who will be the next Superman. He's writing that person's persona, and he needs to make that, on screen be electric we we have spent shows criticizing marvel right now for the dearth of great inspirational heroes that they have here is the ultimate inspirational hero you don't and you don't want to copy christopher reeve you have to figure out a way to make it your own but capture the essence of what christopher reeve put into us when we yes. saw him exactly screen. exactly exactly I really think that first bit of footage, you're going to actually know a lot. Now, it doesn't guarantee anything. Because, I mean, I think in fairness, if you go back to the Man of Steel, I think the Man of Steel teaser is amazing. I think it's one of I the better. crazy. I think it's one of the better teasers that a studio has put out in the last 20 years. Now, I like the movie, but the movie probably doesn't measure up to the promise of the teaser. But I think for this one, the teaser will tell you a lot because it'll show you color palette. It probably will show you tone. I got to admit, if I hear like a 70s pop song, I'm going to be very concerned, right? If I see and hear a different side of James Gunn, if I see something that's kind of serious, that's kinda, I don't know, like you'll know it when you see it, right? It's like if you if you see it and you're like, this is looks this looks and feels and is tastes different than anything I've seen James Gunn do before, then we might have something. But I really think that first sixty seconds, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna feel and know a lot in this case. Yeah, <laughs> James Gunn can't go to his uh, rep repertoire with this film. Can't go into the five minute long back and forth dialogue of of, of uh, uh, you're trying to make this joke thing, whatever. It just can't. This has to be. Something different that he's done before, and hopefully he can do it, Brian. Um, we've had this discussion before. If you look at his resume, you know the only ones that I see that pop out to me is Guardians of the Galaxy. I think he has a, uh, he has some other films, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing on par with some other the some other some other names, you know. So we'll see. Um, that's Superman. Superman Legacy. Batman. We got some Batman news lately, Brian. And we have been wondering where this will be. The Cape Crusader, the animated show. Um, when that when, when it was announced, we were going crazy because of the possibilities, the people that were involved. Uh, and now it's found a home. That home will be in Amazon, and Amazon has ordered two seasons of the Cape Crusader. How many episodes? I don't know, but I hope is a bunch, Brian. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this announcement, and does it get us closer to most of DC going over to Amazon if this is successful? And if Amazon, and if obviously if DC, you can't. If James Gunn and Peter Saffron cannot satisfy the success that Zaslaw sees. 100 billion dollars. Your thoughts on the announcement that 
the Cape Crusader is going to be on Amazon? Um, look, I mean, it's it's obviously the background that I'm using these days, and uh, I think it's great news. Look, I mean, I think it's the, the the two things I took from it were number one, I would expect nothing less from Amazon than to put full resources behind it. So a two season order says we believe and we're yeah. willing to pony up to make this look good to to give the voice cast the opportunity they need like i also the so that was number one number two was they kept the creative team together okay who ray bruce tim ed brubaker matt reeves and yes jj abrams in the background are all in the room for this yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. got dropped as part yeah. of the transition so i wish the, i wish uh the mcu would have taken some notes when they did that with daredevil but <laughs> we'll get to that later because yeah, yeah. you're right um but yeah, so th what that tells me is that these gentlemen will get a chance to realize the vision they had for the show when they pitched it, which is what we want to see. And what's being described is the number three thing to get excited about. It is to recapture the mad quote, I mean, the recapture the magic of the 90s show with quote, deeper psychological dives, cinematic noir, st noir storytelling. And then the rumor, which has been out there that this could be TVMA. <laughs> Batman's in a good place right now. That's all I can say. Like animated Batman, we got the Penguin show, we got the Batman Part Two. Like, be all right when it comes to Batman. And Amazon, you know, I was trying to think of the right analogy for this. I heard an interview with Lawrence Taylor the week of the Super Bowl. He was complaining about you can't you can't hit the QB in today's game, and he said, "But you know what? If I was playing today, he said." I'd still make sure I was in the backfield in every play next to Tom Brady. I'd just give him a pat on the butt. <laughs> this is Amazon in the backfield of DC giving them a pat on the butt. We're here. Yeah. We're here. When things if things go sideways, we now have our our foot's in the door. And we're gonna make this big. And we're gonna promote that. And if something goes wrong on your side, we're gonna be ready. Yep. That's what it says to me. Yeah. That's exactly what it says. Uh, yeah, but this will this uh, did they say any time frame, Brian, on when this will drop? No, no. So I think what this tells me is the formal announcement now should lead to voice casting. We should start now. We're in moving in earnest. The only thing that we knew was going on behind the scenes was sort of like pre-production stories right so I'm, I'm assuming there's some scripts i'm assuming there's some scripts that are already written for episodes they want to shoot but they don't have a cast because they didn't have a kind of a green light for where they were going to be so that's what i'm expecting next i wouldn't be surprised if i mean we're in march maybe it's a little tight but i wouldn't be surprised if at comic-con you get a couple of yeah celebrity voice announcements i mean there's a big void obviously with kevin conroy having passed away I, i'm assuming had he not passed away they might have gone back to him for one more run as, as the character, but that's a that's going to be an interesting one to see who they come up with. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get those announcements this summer. Yeah, but that would put the show probably coming out twenty five four. I would think maybe late later twenty twenty four for season one. That is one piece of TV that I will not miss. That I'll be looking for, have my scheduled. Uh, I wish they'd release everything in one shot. I'd watch everything in one shot. I would binge it. But we gotta wait for some. We gotta wait some time for this Cape Crusader Bat, uh, Batman to come out. Uh, and and it's this is gonna be the most talked about uh, animated show. Uh, when it does drop, uh, when it comes out, uh, I can't wait, Brian. I, can't I mean, wait. Am I mean, Amazon already between it, with this show, Invincible. Invincible. And the boys, like, they're killing they it. They already have a little bit of a lineup for the genre. They're killing it. They're killing it nice and slowly. A la Marvel. <laughs> 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 Until they went crazy and then they just give you everything. I don't know, man. <laughs> but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of. Uh, the Cape Crusader coming to Amazon and is just is this just a precursor to what may come in the future with the DCIP and 
the DCU has a lot to think about. James Gunn, Peter Safran know what the mission is. Can they do it? Can they bring Zasloff the Scrooge McDuck <laughs> money <laughs> uh, that he thinks that is possible uh, with this IP? Let us know in the comment section below. Brian, any last words? I mean... I th I'm probably stretching with this analogy. I still don't understand why they're giving this one away, to be quite honest. And I think they're going to live to regret that decision. Um, you know, it almost, what it reminds me of is like, Paramount has this Yellowstone universe on Paramount Plus, but they don't have Yellowstone itself because they didn't think the show was going to be a hit. So they sold the rights to it from day one. And so it floats around Peacock and all these other services. And it's like, they sold Bruce Tim Batman show. That's an crazy. Animated form. I'm like, of all the things, I still think they're gonna regret having it. I think it's gonna be better for us as fans because Amazon will plant a flag on around this show. But I think Warner Brothers is gonna regret having this over at Amazon someday. It's like Wednesday. The same thing. Yeah. And that was yeah. a good that was a good show. But I wonder was like I'm, what I'm wondering is like when you sit there and you're watching this show, who's saying this show is not gonna be good? Or it's not gonna bring in subscribers or it's gonna cause some uh, uh fanfare. It's it's it's, it's I, a, my only guess is money. My only guess is when they pitch this, they pitch this because they want it if they want it to be like a highbrow, expensive animated show, and Warner Brothers just like, we don't have the cash for that. And Amazon's like, Well, we do. And like that, that that's the only thing that to me would make any sense. How much different do you think is going to look in terms of is you think it's going to look expensive, Brian? Or are we talking about the money's going to go to voice to the people surrounding the, the production of this? I think it's more the latter because I think they they know that part of what people love about the show is the look of it. So that I think they want to they want to modernize, but they don't want to revolutionize what people loved in, in 19 in the 1990s in terms of how this was drawn and how this was shown. So I think it's more the latter. I think it's more who's involved in the writing, like oh, who man. they're getting to cat to like play the parts, like the, the sound, the VFX, the score. Like that's more, I think what they're going for. I'd love a job. Just <laughs> watching them, just sitting there, just watching the, them do their voiceovers. And, oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait. Let us know in the comments section below what you guys think. Um, Remember to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, go to our iTunes so you can listen to the, sh the show there on your drive to work. Um, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Woo!